passive versus active transport. What's the difference? Well, passive and active transport are two types of cell transport. And cell transport is any way in which we get molecules, glucose, salts, water, across a semi-permeable membrane such as the phospholipid bilayer that surrounds all cells. So let's talk about passive transport first and compare it to active transport. In passive transport, when there is a concentration gradient, meaning there are more solutes on one side of a membrane than on the other, and we move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, this means we are going down the concentration gradient. This incorporates three different types of transport. Diffusion moves down the concentration gradient. Osmosis, which is the movement of water down its concentration gradient, specifically. And facilitated diffusion, which uses a transport protein to move substances down their concentration gradient. So, if we're talking about the concentration gradient, we're going to go from a high solu solute concentration to a low solute concentration. And we're moving a specific substance. And in passive transport, do we need the use of ATP to move substances? The answer in all three of these cases is no. No ATP required. So let's compare passive transport, these three types of passive transport, to active transport. In active transport, again, we find this phospholipid bilayer, this semi-permeable membrane, in which perhaps there are, again, more solutes, let's say, on the inside of this cell than on the outside. In active transport, we always move substances against the con concentration gradient. So we're going to move substances from a low to a high solute concentration, or in this case, in this picture, these substances, whatever they are, glucose, let's say, are going to move from low to high. And is ATP required to move anything from low to high? Yes, absolutely. So ATP is required, or energy. Think about it as a river. If you're flowing downstream, it doesn't take too much energy for that water to move down. And if you're moving upstream, think about how, how much more difficult it is to paddle, let's say, if you're in a boat. And so what are the types of active transport? Well, different from passive transport. They include endocytosis, exocytosis, and a transport pump. And we'll talk about these six types of transport in other videos.